here's your host, Pastor Lori Baker. Hello, everybody, and thank you, Tammy Sue Baker, for introducing us today. Again, Jim is still not feeling well, so he is home resting, which I said, honey, you can stay home, you're going to rest, and Although, I must say, if there was ever a show he should be at and doing today and hosting today (laughs) is this one, because today we are talking about the making of a watchman. And all of us know Jim Baker is a watchman. Um, (laughs) That is his calling. Yes, he doesn't call himself a prophet, but believe me, he is very prophetic. And, um, but, but he is definitely a watchman. So last night I was sharing with our guest, Jennifer LeClaire, I was sharing that I was, we were sitting up in bed, I was reading um, to him all these things in, in Jennifer's new book, and it is really incredible. So today we are um, so excited to have back with us Jennifer LeClaire, who is Senior Leader of Awakening House of Prayer in Fort Lauderdale, Florida. She is also the founder of the Ignite Network and founder of Awakening Prayer Hubs and Prayer Movement. Jennifer served as the first female editor of Charisma Magazine and a prolific author of over 50 books. So welcome back to our program. Thank you, Lori. I'm honored. Love you so much. Thank you. you. You're so amazing. And to think you're so young and you've written 50 (laughs) books. I know. I started when I was two. Absolutely. (laughs) You just started like mom. (laughs) You started telling her she wrote for you. Just kidding. But you are really quite a woman of God. And you you are, you're a powerful, mighty woman of God. We follow a lot of your articles that Mm -hmm. you write. I know, Mondo, we were just talking about that, right, Mondo? Yeah. You know, we track people through articles, and you were one of them. And said we, and the first time you came to the program, we said, you have to come here and talk about angels. Mm-hmm. So we did that. But when you left, there was a shift that took place that we noticed that you started not writing a lot of articles, but you started really becoming a voice to the nation and the Amen. church in a different form. And it was so cool just to watch your ministry grow from afar and to have you here to talk about the making of a watchman. Mm-hmm. I told you earlier wow, this book really helps you understand the type of ministry that we're serving under and the role that we play, the role that you play when you support this program and understanding the role of the watchman. And this is what this ministry has become. That's right. Mm -hmm. You know, Jennifer, the first time you were with us here, you wrote, and I loved it. I love this so much. You wrote Angels on Assignment Again. And Mm -hmm. that was powerful because, you know, I don't know about, the rest of you, but you should believe in angels if you read the Bible. <laughs> and, um, and angels are with us. And, and so, but how um, does God give you the inspiration for so many books on the spiritual and prophetic realms? Well, that's my secret. I can't, I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> we want to know the secret. You have to tell us. <laughs> yeah, you know, I'm, I'm an avid student of the word, and I believe the word is a gate to the prophetic. Amen. Worship is also a gate. Um, prayer is also a gate. And so I've learned how to go through these different gates mm-hmm. of revelation and pull down, you know, what God is saying mm-hmm. for this hour. Everybody, mm-hmm. you know, wants to know what God is saying right now, right now. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. That, absolutely. Yeah. yeah and Especially now, especially, especially now. now. You know, Mondo, um, before we get into too much more with Jennifer, because we are going to talk about the making of a watchman. And I'm, I, I kind of kiddingly, you know, as I was going through the book, but I said, you know, you might be a watchman if, and we're going to go through that today, if these things, if you recognize these things in your life. And Jennifer lays it out so beautifully in this book. It's the most easy, understandable book. I just loved it. Just going Thank through the you. subtitles to understand, you know, about being that maybe you might be a watchman if these things are happening to you. And I believe there's a lot of watch men, which means watch women as well, everybody. Uh, but there's a lot of watchmen out there that they don't maybe even know they are. And we're going to, we're going to talk about that today. But before we do, Mondo, let's do, let's Absolutely. hit some news. I mean, I, I just cannot not talk about what's been going on in Afghanistan. Um, 
you know, I am a, you could say, <laughs> Jim says, you watch the news too much, Lori. But I love to watch the news and see what's going on. I love current events. And um, I, because I like to know the times we're living in. Mm -hmm. And according to the word of God, you know, you have the Bible in one hand and you watch the news on the other. And you know, we are at, we're at the beginning of the end. We are in those very, very last days. And Afghanistan and, and what's going on there has been very troubling to me. Absolutely. And especially because of the women and the, ch and, and the little yes. girls. That is just, blow it's breaking my heart and praying all the time and to think that our troops are going in and, and the way the administration has not handled, has handled this very wrongly in my opinion, um, but we have to pray. No, absolutely. In, in 2019, Pastor Jim stood here on this platform and gave a warning to the nation. As a watchman, he began to see he had trouble even coming to the, that stage that night to deliver this word because the word was pretty heavy because some of the events that he began to see prior to the New Year's Eve message that he brought were things that we're seeing right now. Let me just give you one of them just to get your attention real quick. Earthquakes. We are watching earthquakes tremendously. They're growing by the day in areas that we're not used to watching earthquakes make noise. We're watching the Cascadia. And with this Cascadia, you're watching volcanoes becoming active by the day. One of these days, I'm going to give you a full report on some of the top earthquakes and that are bringing the top three volcanoes that America is watching right now, mm -hmm. that if those three volcanoes go, America will no longer be the same. And, of course, we can't forget about praying for the people of Haiti. Absolutely. Who just exp experienced a 7.2 earthquake. 7.2 earthquake. Mm -hmm. And that damaged one of the biggest oxygen plants in that nation. We're watching for that. Over 2,000 deaths and about 12,000 people have been uh, injured in this earthquake. And as the developments come in, we're watching hunger even play a bigger part. Mm -hmm. A tropical storm has hit this nation on top right. of earthquake and top of COVID-19. Right. Again, we're watching biblical events take place in just one area all at once. That's the key. When you start watching all at once yes. events take mm -hmm. place, that's when you start noticing the patterns of revelation. Right. This is one of them that Pastor Jim brought. He said, watch flooding, watch water. He mm -hmm. talked about water, right? Well, look at this headline right here from the AP. State imposes water restrictions as drought worsens. This is something that, again, no one was forecasting. We're watching drought take place from starting in one coast, coming all the way into the heartland of the United States. Pray because the, the farmers are having a difficult time. This is another headline. Colorado River water shortage significant for Arizona. Pray for the people of Arizona. Yeah. Another one, CNN, the shocking numbers behind, and we've been talking about this, the shocking numbers behind the Lake Mead drought crisis. Lake Mead is around 143 feet below full, a deficit roughly the height of the Statue of Liberty. Wow. My goodness. Let me give you one last one that we know we've talked about here. Wormwood Prophecy. We're watching that from Tom Horn. Yeah. This is the latest news. NASA says giant asteroid now has a greater chance of hitting Earth. I don't have time to go into this, but this is what some of the watchmen have delivered on this platform, on this yeah. stage. But that's just some of the headlines just to bring you up to date. Yeah, yeah it's really right. something what's going you on. You know, and I just want to mention, if you haven't already received or ordered Pastor Jim's new book, you can make it. I keep finding myself going back to his book because what I'm finding is the prophetic warnings. As we've said, we know Pastor Jim has been called to be a watchman. And he has for many years, many times when you felt all alone. I know there's many times where he has felt alone, yes. like a voice crying out in the wilderness. But I am so grateful today that he has never abandoned the calling that God has placed on his life. And when you read, I'm sitting here, I'm just highlighting, Mondo, I'm listening to you tell these news 
And I'm literally, I've opened up dad's books and he's saying there's warning about floods, warning about the fires, the five stages. There are literally, and I mean, I'm just telling you, there's five stages in this book that he has been warning that he believes the Lord has given him. Have we not seen these things before the return of Jesus? Confusion, explosion, both in the natural and the spiritual realm, deception, depression, and the final being collapse. And so when you look at this, when I read this book, I just urge you, if you want to know the times that we're living in, I believe that Pastor Jim has been given an insight into the days ahead and what we are walking through. So I just want to encourage you, if we've been talking about Pastor's new book, it's available now for you to order it from the ministry for a $30 love gift. But I just urge you, there's so much in this from the prophetic realm that you and I are living through right now. That's right. Yeah. It really is. It's not just about Jim. You know, when we, when we talk about Jim, and we're not here today to talk about yeah. Jim's book, but when Mondo brings yeah. these headline, this headline news, and then Maricela opens it up, she's like, look, Mom, look, Dad. He hair. wrote everything in here already mm -hmm. because he's a watchman. And, and he said, it's all in here. It's not just about his stroke and how he overcame that and all of that and it's it's so much more than that it's mm -hmm. a prophetic book it's and and it has so much in here so much meat in here and I have a feeling some of you maybe haven't ordered it yet I mean I really do so you know pick up the phone order it you won't be disappointed plus mm -hmm. you know we get very personal too in this book and mm -hmm. we talk about you know what we went through as a family and so it's very very important but most of all that you can make it God's faithfulness in dark times, past, present, and future. Jim Baker, a watchman. Mm -hmm. And that's what we're talking about today with Jennifer. Jennifer, um, also, I just have to say with this new book, The Making of a Watchman, I'm sitting here looking at these two I books, know. and guess who did the foreword yeah. of both of these books? by Cindy Jacobs. Oh, and man. Cindy is one of our dearest friends. Yes. We love Cindy, yes. don't we? She's amazing. Yes. And she she has prophetically spoken over our lives in so yes. many ways. I know, Jennifer, she's spoken over your life mm -hmm. in so many ways. And her foreword of, of your new book, The Making of a Watchman, is excellent. With that, you've written articles about the state of our culture and and which you watch very closely, which I'm so glad you do. You're a watchman. <laughs> and what are you seeing take place in our culture right now? And what do you think is happening? It's it's uh, chaos. It's a, a spirit of harlotry that is enticing Christians to follow after other gods and deny Jesus. It's a spirit of violence that is ravaging the earth. It's yes. plagues, it's wars, it's rumors of wars, it's earthquakes mm. in diverse places. This is the beginning of the end times. There's absolutely no question in my mind. Absolutely. Yeah. There's yeah. absolutely the beginning of end times. You know, we talk about the watchman and all the time on this program. I mean, mm -hmm. this is what we live. This is what we talk about. And would you define to us, for us all what being a watchman is for those who may be new to our program? Sure. Well, first of all, we have to understand Jesus' command to watch and pray. Yeah. So we don't want to get, you know, so far out there that we think, oh, well, well Pastor Jim's a watchman or you yeah. know, Jennifer, you're a watchman. Right. We all have a watchman function in Amen. some area of our life, even yes. if it's just a watchman over your own family. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So the watchman is one who watches, who guards, who prays, who pushes back darkness, who invites the king of glory in. Essentially, the watchman is a watcher, a watcher for God. Yes. Exactly. And you know, Cindy writes in the foreword of your book, Jennifer LeClaire has been used by God to write a training manual that gives That's a clarion it. call to all generations that God has called us to stand in the gap upon the wall and sound the alarm about potential dangers. She also goes on to say, thank God for this instructive book that gives knowledge and practical steps on how to be a watchman. This mm -hmm. is a training manual yeah. for a watchman. And you, you're, you may find out you mm -hmm. might be a watchman mm -hmm. <laughs> and you didn't really even know it. And I like what you said. It may just be for your own family. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You know, it doesn't that. mean, I, I love that too, because it may be you have to say, you know, talk to your family and you see yeah. something. And I can remember even when the kids were growing up, I remember what sometimes, you know, 
I was always the one to make all the fast decisions, mm -hmm. you know, all the thing when you have a bunch of kids and they're asking this and that. And, you know, but, but at the end of the day, Jim was always the one, you know, the yes or the no. So once in a while they would say, you know, we want to go to so-and-so's house and go play at so-and-so's house. And, and Jim goes, mm -mm, I don't feel it's no. I don't feel right about that. Mm -hmm. And so the kids all ended up coming to our house and playing. <laughs> you know, we were always like, not to be helicopter parents or anything like that, but it was like, <laughs> no. But, but, I, but we all learned mm -hmm. to listen to him and heed his warnings and obey it, quite mm -hmm. frankly. Mm -hmm. And he was always right. Mm -hmm. I mean, he was always right because that is an anointing. One of uh, the anointings God has placed on, on his life. So this part I love in your book. Well, I love the book, the whole book. But this part I love, because you make it so easy to understand, is what are the signs that we may be a watchman? That's such a great question. And, and this is going to really bring a lot of identity, Lori, to people. People are going to find the watchman within them. Yes. One of them is you get frequent words of warning. Mm. And, you know, it could be a warning for your family. It could be a warning in the workplace. It could be a warning over your city, your church. The nations. There's different right. levels of watchmen. Right. Mm -hmm. uh, so you know, frequent words of warning. That is a part and parcel of the watchman's ministry is, is to warn. Mm -hmm. Exactly. Mm -hmm. You also say you carry prayer burdens in association with the warning. Mm -hmm. yeah. right? And that, it's, it's critical because some people will tell you, well, the watchman's job is over when he or she releases the warning. And nothing could be further yeah. from the truth. The watchman is called to pray. Be the first line of prayer. If God right. shows us something, if God gives us a warning, it is our responsibility to be like Ezekiel, to stand in the yeah. gap, to make up the hedge. And it starts with us. And then we mobilize. And Cindy Jacobs is such a wonderful watchman. She mobilizes intercessors like nobody's business. She does. That is the, 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 the mature watchman right that there. That really is. You yeah. also say... You feel fire in your bones to release the warning. Yeah, mm. this is a big deal because it's, a, it's an urgency of the Holy Spirit. I had a, a word in June. I released it uh, in uh, my mid-year prophetic update. And the Lord showed me that there was going to be assassination attempts and mysterious deaths on world leaders. Well, just two weeks. Well, actually, the day after I released that, the president of Venezuela, they tried to get him. Then they got Haiti, yeah. Madagascar. There's been six since mm -hmm. I prophesied wow. that word. And we prayed, and thank God, most of them did not get assassinated. It was attempted, but they survived. Mm -hmm. That's because of prayer. That is the yeah. power of prayer. Amen. That is wow. the power of yeah. prayer. That's yeah. right I, on. I like this one here. You have thick skin. Yes. Oh, right. boy. You, you have if to you... develop some thick skin. <laughs> I'm going to tell you what. I love this one. The watchman will be rejected in his day and perhaps celebrated in his legacy. Wow. Mm -hmm. How important yeah. it is to have thick skin when you are... You know, when you recognize you're a watchman. Mm -hmm. Well, if you have to have thick skin because if you don't, you'll give up. That's if right. you don't, you'll, you'll take on a rejection complex, a persecution complex. And then God can't really use you uh, to the extent that he'd like to. Yeah. Right. And so, you know, we, we've got to, we've just got to, it just goes with the territory. You've just got to get tough. You've got to toughen up. You've got to oh, toughen up. You <laughs> absolutely do. And actually, in, in, in the terminology I would use for me personally, I would say, it's, it's not men's opinion and what men say. We ha it's God. We want to be what, we, you know, God's opinion, what he's saying. Yes, and because we will all stand before him one day alone. I don't get to stand next to Jim or my amazing, <laughs> wonderful mother. You know, I stand alone. And I, yes. But I will say I live with the watchman. Mm -hmm. So I understand when I, when I read this part here, I go, oh, my goodness. He's, <laughs> he, said, he said, I mean, he prays all the time. That's yeah. all. When he's laying in bed and resting, and even as he's been recovering over this past year, um, he is praying all the time. I always say, honey, what are you doing? He goes, I'm praying. And, you know, he's just constantly mm -hmm. in prayer, nonstop. And so when I, I said, boy, you carry prayer burdens in association with the warning. You mm -hmm. feel fire in your bones mm -hmm. to release the warning. And mm -hmm. I've watched that over the years with mm -hmm. him. Yes. That he has to release that as hard as it is, mm -hmm. through, especially early on, many, many years ago, mm -hmm. when nobody wanted to hear the things mm -hmm. that he, that God showed him, that the warning signs that That's were going right. on, uh, he did it anyway. Yes. And That's God honors that amen. because he knows that he answers to God, not people. Mm -hmm. um, your message is often ignored, you said in this. Ooh. And that's another one. <laughs> I live with this man that is a watchman. Yeah. I've watched people just ignore his message, mm -hmm. whether it's 
gossip going on and he'll say, you know, stop this gossip mm -hmm. because that's mm -hmm. the number one thing God hates mm -hmm. is sowing discord among the brethren. That's right. And um, and so I even I've even seen just on that you know, or on the big things, um, earthquakes are coming. Food this preparation. Is, yeah, food oh, preparation. Oh, yeah. That's a big Huge one. one. Everybody mean, made fun of us then. Yeah, I remember you guys, mm -hmm. you know, we were trying to understand why the urgency to get food and prepare and having meetings and preparing the church. And I saw how the church just mocking after mocking. But when a major event took place, I still remember when we received a call from a, a mega church ordering a million pounds of food yeah. and he said finally they're listening finally mm -hmm. people are listening to the Amen. warning Amen. But you're absolutely right That's right but you know what i love about that though is for the our partners who watch even just this week we receive your emails you're writing us and you know the number one thing that they say they say i thank god for this ministry because jim prepared us now don't not only did he spiritually prepare us but he has given us the tools to prepare i know Know one individual, one gentleman, he wrote me, he said, I have generators, I have food, mm -hmm. I've prepared for my children, I've sent them things, whether they like it or not, I am sending, <laughs> but you know what, like, yeah. right, oh, I mean, honestly, this audience whether here, our like residents, on, you guys, right. how many times have I heard you guys say to us, my kids, I am thinking ahead for them, I am preparing for mm -hmm. them, and we have seen, we have seen how God has used that in amazing ways, even in this moment right now, we have seen the Lord utilize that act of faith and how we've been able to minister to them through horrible times, even like we've gone through with COVID and people losing their jobs. Do you know how many people fed their families off the emergency food during COVID when they lost wow. their jobs? That's right. So I praise God that we have been able to be used by God. And yeah. every person who watches this show, right. you will be used by God. That's God right. will allow your faith, the things that you have done, he will use it. Mm -hmm. You also say in this part, see, I can't get away from this <laughs> part about, because, you know, I, because I really, really strongly believe that there are people out mm -hmm. there that maybe don't recognize that they really are a watchman. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And um, for, for that, it, we all have people in our life that we influence, mm -hmm. whether it's little kids to grandkids, whether it's, uh, your churches, or you're teaching by your Sunday school, or you're a pastor of a small church, a mega church, you know, mm -hmm. some, something. But you, when you really understand that this is a call from mm -hmm. God, that and and actually, like you said, we're all to watch. The That's Bible right. t tells us mm. to watch. And so, but you say another thing. You say you, you keenly observe the signs of the times. Oh boy, it is so critical. Now, again, every believer is supposed to be observing the signs of the times. Jesus rebuked the Pharisees. They say, you know, you recognize the signs in the sky, but you're, you're not recognizing the signs yeah. of the times. Here I am. This is the day wow. of your visitation. Yeah. But it's really keen. And, and, and in this hour, I really believe, and I'm going to speak this over uh, Pastor Jim and you and your family, that God is restoring honor to the watchmen, and you all are forerunners Amen. because of the persecution that you've endured when no one wanted to listen. People didn't want to hear it. Even as uh, Mondo said, the, the, the mocking that came, yeah. God is restoring honor to the watchmen in this hour, and you all are forerunners in that movement. So I say to you, keep preaching, keep prophesying, and keep yes. warning the body of Christ because Praise we are in God. a difficult, difficult crisis. Yes, we are. And it's Amen. going to keep getting worse. It is wow. going to keep getting yes. worse. It has to get... Now, see, did you hear what Jennifer just said? It's going to keep getting worse, it everybody. Is. It has to. In order for the Lord to come back for his bride, it's going to keep getting worse. It's going to get worse, worse, worse. Not to scare you, not to live in fear, mm -hmm. but to know that this is a day and age that, I mean, you know, God knew you were going to be alive at this day, mm -hmm. this time. Mm -hmm. So you need to equip yourself. And once again, we're bringing you an amazing book. The Making of a Watchman. Uh, this will help equip you. Um, the other thing you said in this part is, see, I can't get away from this because <laughs> I know there's people out yes. there that don't understand that they really wow. are called to be That's a watchman. Good. You have an understanding of seasons. Mm. Mm. That is so good. It is so good. You know, that Issachar anointing. Yes. That is yes. available to all of us. You know, you have to cry out for some of these things. So you what really... if somebody doesn't know what that means, Issachar, Issachar anointing? Issachar anointing. Mm -hmm. And the Bible says the sons of Issachar, one of the tribes of Issachar, they, they understood the times and they knew what Israel should do. And in the times that we're entering into, we need supernatural wisdom. We do. We need an understanding. We need to know when to turn right, when to turn left, when to stop and just look to the Lord. Yes. I mean, this is the 
is a car anointing and that the watchman understands the times, the seasons ahead of time so that as we go into the next season, we're readily prepared. Exactly. That is the key to see it before it happens. So yeah. we can prepare yeah. spiritually, yes. you know, have the food on hand. Right. You emotionally, know, emotionally, we have to be prepared. So we're not all, all going crazy, all freaked yeah. out. Yeah. You know, the Bible says a double minded person is always unstable. That's right. And there's yeah. such unstability in the church right now. I'm not talking about the world. The world's going to do whatever the world. We're called to the church, mm -hmm. to the body, and the mm -hmm. body is so unstable right now. You said something so powerful. I'm glad you're reading this. Yo, I love this. You know what? This. You said it. I, I know you, you're so smart. You are. You said it, it's going to identify you. It's going to give you your identity. Yes. I can think of Tabitha or one of the yes. ladies that works here. And, yes. and she said I could use her name, so I, I can use it. But it's going to identify why she's having dreams about earthquakes. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And I'm telling you, you are having dreams. You're getting visions. You're getting warnings. You get pray. I, I thank you because it helps me be next to a watchman on how do I operate my gifting alongside mom and dad in the ministry. It identifies my role in the role that I'm playing mm -hmm. in how to pray when he sees the vision, when you see what's going on and what's coming, mm -hmm. how do we align ourselves, not go out of alignment, mm -hmm. but align ourselves to the ministry and the calling right. because it brings obedience and it brings what, of course, the ultimate, which is one of the greatest things that we can understand is how do we become an armor bearer to the watchman in the role that we're playing. But I knowing my identity and identifying the watchman Man, it brings the confusion down. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It does. Now, here's another thing. I just have to hit, hit this real quick. You said you feel a sense of responsibility to guard and protect mm -hmm. as a watchman. Mm -hmm. You do, because God has given us all what Paul the Apostle would call a metron, right? An area, sphere, boundaries of ministry. And, you know, again, whether that's your home, you're going to guard your home. You're going to yes. protect right. your home. You're going to yes. protect your kids, yes. right? And yes. whether it's your business, you're going to protect your business. You don't right. want, you know, we, we, evildoers there and doing things. And so we must guard. We must protect. That's one of the Hebrew words for watchmen is actually means to guard. Mm -hmm. And uh, mm -hmm. it, it's, it's critical. We need more watchmen on the wall. And I really believe prophetically so many of you, you're having an aha moment right now. Mm -hmm. The aha moment is the beginning point for you. You need to get equipped. Yes. Because most of the church isn't Amen. teaching about the watchman. No. There's not a lot out there Amen. on it. And mm -hmm. so it's time for you to get equipped so you can stand fully because you're going to be greatly rewarded by God for standing Amen. in that role. You will Amen. be greatly rewarded yeah. by God. Amen. You also said you are attracted to accounts of watchmen in the Bible, mm -hmm. which is excellent. Mm -hmm. You say also you will be determined to see what God is showing you. And the key is you'll be determined. Mm -hmm to see what God is showing you. You will find out. You're going to have to get the book to, yeah. to, to read. I've, been, <laughs> I, I've given you the subtitles. I have to say, listen, I'm hearing this, and some of you are watching right now, and you're saying, I need this. It's resonating with your spirit because maybe you haven't found. You've been crying out to God, what is my calling, Lord? How many people are asking mm -hmm. God, God, how am I to be used in these times? We all want to be used by God. And this is the way we all are called to walk. I love what you said, Jennifer. This is for all of us. We are all called to watch and pray. What does that mean? And so I thank you. This is truly a training manual that I believe will unlock in you. Many of you are looking for your destiny. God has not forsaken your destiny. You are called and chosen. And so this is a way for you to unlock that. And so you can order this. I want to say right now, order this. Call us right now. This is for a $25 donation. The Making of a Watchman. Mm -hmm. Practical training for prophetic prayer and powerful intercession. We're also including with this offer Jennifer LeClaire's evening service here at Morningside, Heaven's War Room. Wow, I can't wait for mm -hmm. Heaven's War Room. That's a DVD included with her brand new book, The Making of a Watchman. That's just for a $25 love gift to the ministry. You can call us at 1-888-988-1588. Remember, if you go to the website, jimbakershow.com, you can see the other offers. We have our friends and family offer, which is three of the books, along with one of the DVDs and that's for a donation of $65 to the ministry and a baker's dozen for $200. Do something, but I believe
believe God is equipping his people. Time is getting closer and closer. And I believe he wants to unlock in you what your role is in these times that we're living in. Right. And the other one um, in this, I'll finish up with this because <laughs> I'll read the whole chapter. I love know. it. <laughs> but um, you will have a righteous indignation over sin and injustice. Mm -hmm. The watchman will. Wow. You will carry a strong fear of the Lord over your assignment. Mm -hmm. It's wow. powerful. And let me just say this. I mean, some of the, maybe you're a soccer mom, uh, maybe you're a businessman. This this watchman thing, this is not just for people in five-fold ministry, exactly. in full-time ministry. Right. God is raising up watchmen from all walks of life. Right. He's raising up children who are having end times yes. dreams, yes. showing forth what is about to happen in the earth. So this is for soccer moms. This is for marketplace leaders. This is for school teachers. This yes. is for everybody. Yes. It really is for yes. everybody. Jennifer, how are you called to be a watchman? <laughs> All right. Let me give you the short version. I um, was at a church that used to go to Nicaragua every year to do missions. And I asked, I was so excited. I said, can I go? Can I go? And they're like, of course. I got there. I'm like, can I go home, please? I mean... It <laughs> It was so hot. No, I've been on those missions trips many times. Oh my I God, I was starving. I was exhausted. Oh. I was doing the me the media. Yes, yes, and, yes, uh, yes. <laughs> and I came in really like we were staying on the side of an orphanage and um, we had like bunk beds and there was like a hot tin roof and there was a mosquito net and you could hear the iguanas, you know, going over there. I'm like, oh my God, please get me out of here. <laughs> you know, rapture me, get me out of here. And, uh, and the Lord, I was exhausted. And the Lord said, yeah. get your Bible. And I'm like, Lord, you know, I'm exhausted. He said, get your Bible. I said, yes, Lord. He said, get your flashlight. Everyone else is asleep in the whole dorm. And I began to read, I began to open my Bible and he said, go to Ezekiel 3. And I'm like, I never even read Ezekiel. I was two years old in the Lord. I mean, you know, you're not reading that, that kind of, yeah, like, you what are, is this Ezekiel exactly. stuff? Wheel within the wheel. <laughs> exactly. And so I read Ezekiel 3 and it says, you know, warn them for me. Yeah. If you warn them and they turn from their wicked ways, then they'll be saved. But if you don't warn them, the blood will be on your hands. Mm. And the fear of the Lord just rested up with the spirit of the fear of the Lord. I was shaking. And then the Lord said, now go to Ezekiel 33. Mm. And I'm twisting over the pages. And it essentially says the same thing. It was a double confirmation. Amazing. The Ezekiel 33 message, the blood on our hands. God is always looking for someone who is brave and bold enough to speak forth the truth to a people who have no willingness to hear it, but at least God gives them the chance. That's why the warning, the watchman is so important. God is trying to wake up the church. He's trying to wake he up is. the world and the watchman may be persecuted, but it is worth the price because yes. in heaven, I'm telling you, the eternal rewards for the watchman intercessor yes. are great. Amen. 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 So how does a watchman get a higher perspective? I call it building towers of prayer. And so it all starts with prayer. You know, it starts with prayer, it ends with prayer. Our whole entire relationship with the Lord is predicated on prayer. That's our communication with Him. That's our lifeline. And so we need to sit and wait upon the Lord. I love what Cindy said when uh, I was talking with her. I was with her at the Deborah's United Conference. Mm. And she says, you know, anymore, she says, I just go in my prayer closet and I just wait. I don't even pray. I don't ask. I just wait upon the Lord. Mm -hmm. And that's so difficult for so many people to do in our society because your phone is at Facebook and yeah. you said, ding, mm -hmm. ding, ding, ding. Mm -hmm. She says, I just wait on the Lord. And you ascend as you wait. You ascend as you pray. And you're able to get that bird's eye view. Yes. You know, the Bible says those who wait on the Lord, he'll renew their strength. Amen. They'll mount up with wings like eagles, right? And that mounting up with wings like eagles, the eagles assemble the prophetic. And so when we mount up with wings like eagles, we are gaining that overview. We're seeing through the eyes of the Holy Spirit what he wants us to see. So beautiful. Yeah. I love that. I like yeah. I've heard Cindy say that too, where she mm -hmm. just sits and waits mm -hmm. to see what God has to say. Because mm -hmm. we all go and like go into your prayer closet, you know, believe me. I got so worn out going into my prayer closet, fight, you know, fighting, trying to fight for my kids. Finally, one day the Lord said, Lori, you've asked a million times now. You're like, I've got this. You know, I'm, I, you know, I'm like, okay. And it was kind of a weight off of my shoulders. Yeah. Like, not that I don't still pray for all my children, but it's still like, and the ministry and you partners, you know, but it was just like, oh, finally I can just rest in him mm -hmm. and wait upon him. What do you mean when you say that silence is the foundation of contemplative prayer? Why is contemplative prayer so important? Because it's a resting in him. I'll tell you a quick story. I was doing the schools of prophetic in London 
and I was teaching this concept. And it's so hard for us to be still and know he's the Lord because yeah. we, we, we want to hear something now. We want to know something now. Mm -hmm. And essentially, uh, I had them do this exercise where I said, I want you to be quiet. We're going to be quiet for 20 minutes. And so the first five minutes, contemplative prayer is essentially being quiet in prayer. And just thinking about Jesus, mm -hmm. just thinking about one scripture, meditating on that one verse. So the first five minutes, people were just antsy. They were fiddling around, getting tissues, getting stuff out of their purse. After the first 10 minutes, it got really, really quiet. After the 15-minute mark, people were crying. They were weeping. Wow. After the 20-minute mark, I cut it off. They came out. They said they had visions of Jesus. Wow. And so they, they said Amazing. they were seeing angels. God was speaking to them. And it's, it's a practice. It takes time. But I think we rush our time with the Lord sometimes. If we'll wait and just meditate on one verse, God will open that up to us and take us to a place we can never get to any other way. Wow. Yeah, that's Amen. powerful because in this day and age with so much going on, so mm -hmm. much, I mean, just so, it's so almost overwhelming yeah. with so much going on. Mm -hmm. It's even harder now. So we have, that's a discipline, really. It is a way To wait upon him. You recently um, said on social media that God is shifting the paradigm of the watchman from warrior watchman to worshiping watchman. Can you explain what you mean by that? It was an impromptu prophecy that I released at my church, Awakening House of Prayer. Uh, I, I, it just completely spontaneous. I've always been a warrior. Uh, you have, yeah. yeah, you are, yeah. you always yeah. have been a yeah. warrior. Yeah. That, yeah. I was raised up in a warfare church and I, I was taught that, but then you can get out of balance with that. See, David, King David, he was a worshiper and a warrior. Yes, he, he balanced both. And in this new watchman movement, what God is doing is, yes, we're, of course, we're still going to war, but God is shifting the focus to where we're, we're not always looking for demons and we're not always looking for the bad, but we're waiting for the second coming of the Lord. Amen. And so we're waiting, we're looking, we're watching for the King of glory. Mm -hmm. We're waiting, we're looking, we're watching for the angelic activity. Mm -hmm. And so mm -hmm. we do that through worship. And the Lord Amen. told me in that prophetic word that as we worship him, we're going to see his glory and we're going to see his beauty and, and it's just a different paradigm. So often we relegate the, the, the watchman to warnings as bad news. Mm -hmm. So when people see us coming, they're like, right. eh, I'm going the other way. Exactly. I, don't, I don't want to hear it. It's another <laughs> warning. I know it's another warning. Uh, but you know, God's going to start true. giving us good news because we're going to need good news yeah. in the times Amen. we're coming into. Oh That's boy. Right. Listen, everybody needs to get this book, at least one book. But I know we have, I feel like there's people, every single pastor should have this book. Every single ministry leader should have this book every single maybe one of your children should have this book you don't know maybe who you've raised up for such a time as this oh god but god does um maybe just people in your life your friends that you, i don't know who they may be but i know that we do have an offer where you can receive more than one book and what is that one That's right. yes we have our friends and family offer which is three of the books the making of a watchman along with the heaven's war room dvd that's for a 65 dollar donation to the ministry or we also have our baker's dozen which is 13 books 13 of her brand new jennifer's brand new books for a donation of $200 that includes shipping and handling. And we're also sending you the free gift of the Heaven's War Room teaching by Jennifer. Exactly. Now, um, so order right now, 1-888-988-1588. Or better yet, go to the website, jimbakershow.com. And remember, you can still write us. We love your cards and letters. You can write us at P.O. Box 7330, Branson, Missouri, 65615. Now, you also write in your book about the modern watchman and you you name some names and some mm -hmm. of these names are very familiar to mm -hmm. people and maybe you didn't know that they were watchmen mm -hmm. one of them i know that you name in yeah, i'm gonna let you is ball just go ahead and say this one david wilkerson mm -hmm. who we talk about all the time yeah. on this broadcast but who are the modern watchman that you write about in this book. David Wilkerson was tremendous. Uh, Steve Hill, who also passed away. I mean, now, okay, Steve Hill, for yeah. those that don't know, yeah. tell who Steve Hill was. Steve Hill was a main figure in the Brownsville Revival. He was also one of my mentors for the last couple of years of his life. And mm. he taught me so much mm -hmm. about watching and even showing grace and how you deliver a message because that's important mm -hmm. as well. Mm -hmm. So Steve was tremendous. Mm -hmm. um, you know, Cindy Jacobs is a, is a watchman. Totally. Uh, Dutch Sheets. Mm -hmm. See, he's a watchman for America. 
Yeah. And that's where it comes into understanding yes. your your sphere. Mm -hmm. he, you know, Cindy is a watchman for the nations. Yes. And that doesn't make one watchman more important mm -hmm. than the other. No. It's just that God gives us assignments. That's I mean, right. Dutch Sheets is an amazing watchman mm -hmm. for America. What would we do without him? He's awesome. Yeah, he is. Um, you know, of course, he, your husband, Pastor yes, Jim. he is. <laughs> He's a watchman. You talk about Watchman Nee in here. You talk mm -hmm. about Reese Howell in here. Oh, yes. You, and, and Lance Lambert. You, you show several examples of watchmen in chapter one, but you say Lance Lambert has an interesting prophecy concerning Israel and those countries who want to divide the land. Can you mm -hmm. tell us about that? He was a watchman for Israel, and he released this. It, it makes me shake when I read it. He essentially said those who are trying to divide Israel judgment is going to fall. Mm. The financial markets in those nations are going to crash. Mm -hmm. uh, there's going to be calamities in the weather. And he said that God essentially said through Lance, he said, you know, you're not going to know what hits you. God is intent on protecting Israel. Yeah. And there's only Amen. so much the enemy can do before God will step in. And mm -hmm. Lance says he, he prophesied a bold word that, you know, mm -hmm. the glory was going to come. And, you know, God is with Israel and we need more watchmen for Israel in this hour. And yes, we do. We absolutely do. And we've been talking a lot about Israel on this broadcast, as you know, as you've been watching over the past several uh, weeks and months and I mean God is really bringing it more and more to the forefront as mm -hmm. as these days approach closer and mm -hmm. closer to his coming you will you also explain I love this part too in your book the four types of watchmen mm -hmm. and these are Hebrew words and I can't remember all the Hebrew words right now but essentially the most popular the most common word for watchmen that most teachers teach is shamar mm -hmm. the shamar prophet mm -hmm. and so the shamar prophet is one who guards one mm -hmm. who protects mm -hmm. and uh, you know all the different types of watchmen there's baseline operations mm -hmm. all watchmen are going to warn mm -hmm. um, there's a particular kind of watchman that uh, essentially is like a spy so you remember when when Jay who was riding furiously his chariot. He was yeah. going to tell the eunuchs, throw Jezebel down. Well, the watchmen saw Jehu coming and they sent out different ones of Jehu, uh, of Jezebel's family. He says, is it peace? Is it peace? He's like, you know, come around and follow me. There's no peace. And so that, those are the ones that look out really far into the distance. Mm -hmm. Some watchmen have a further purview yes. than others. It's so true. I've, I've seen, I mean, I've seen it with Jim. I've seen it with Cindy. I've seen it with so many different guests on our show that have the different, Yes. Vantage point, so to speak, yeah, I guess, absolutely. right? It, it really is amazing. And you, and in this chapter, you say things like this. You guard your, your sphere of influence. Discern the difference between friend and foe. Mm -hmm. Wow, powerful. Warn the church. Report to those in authority. Work with the gatekeepers. Make intercession. And I'm just giving you a little bit. That's why you've got to get the book and, so, and to understand mm -hmm what's going on in this day and age. Um, Jennifer, you say that the watchman's role is primarily to the church. Mm -hmm. What happens if the watchman does not release the warning or make intercession? Yeah, the watchman's role is primarily to the church. And uh, God told Ezekiel, I have made you a watchman to the house of Israel. So that was his territory. Mm -hmm. If the watchman does not release the warning, I believe there's a measure, well, it's disobedience, it's rebellion. Mm -hmm. So we have to be confident in who we are and what God has called yes. us to do and get rid of the fear of man. That's now, right. we understand, you know, that God is gracious and God is kind and he's not going to whack us over the head if we don't release the warning because we were afraid. Right. But we need to get equipped so we have confidence in our gift because if we don't release the warning, people could die. Wow. If we don't release the warning, you know, calamities could come on the earth that we're not prepared for. Mm -hmm. This is what we're getting to. Yeah. This is the hour that we're living in where we've been blindsided by too many things in the earth. Mm -hmm. And we cannot afford to keep getting blindsided. Well, the church is supposed to be at the forefront, leading the charge, you know, pointing to Jesus. And if the watchman doesn't do that, well, then essentially they're in disobedience to the wow. Lord. Not really. It's a heavy call. It's a, yeah. It is a heavy yeah. call. Yeah. It is a heavy call. Yeah. I will. I'll tell you that. It's a heavy call. You know it. I mean, Jim knows it. I live with the watchman, <laughs> and I know the call is heavy. But, but God has entrusted you, Jim, and so many others to be a watchman mm -hmm. and watchwoman and um, to, to, for us, for the church. I really believe it is for the church mm -hmm. more, more than for the world. More I love that. Mm -hmm. I love that part in your book as well. Tell us about John the, John the Baptist mantle that you received. Oh, wow. I love this story because I was very young in the Lord, very young believer, 
And there was one night where I didn't feel like it was a Friday night service. I did not feel like going to church. I want to say this to somebody that's watching. When you really don't feel like going to church, that's when you need to go to church. Right. Because the enemy is trying to keep you from going to receive something. That's right? it. Yes. I mean, I mean, unless, of course, if you're sick or something, I get it. But if you just say, oh, yeah. I'm tired. I just went to work. No, I didn't want to go. I went anyway, and the, the pastor calls me up and begins to prophesy over me. He says, you're a voice of governing authority. Mm -hmm. And he said, I unlock that voice. Wow. Well, I didn't have any idea what in the world he meant. So I go home being a writer, and I'm looking up in the dictionary, voice governing. I'm like, I don't have any idea what he's talking about at all. And the Lord said, get your Bible. He always takes me back to the Bible. And I opened the Bible. Because I was a new believer, I sort of opened it, and I went like this, and I went, yeah. um, yeah. <laughs> Yes. <laughs> yes. Anybody ever I do think, that when you're a young uh, I believer? I think we've all done yeah. that. Yeah. And I landed on this scripture about John the Baptist. Mm. And it said, a voice crying in the wilderness, yeah. make mm -hmm. the path straight for the Lord. And I said, mm -hmm. that's odd. It's a voice. Okay, where's the governing? And so I took my Bible and I opened it up and I just went like that. And when I land, I landed on the same exact verse in the next chapter. So it was, it was Matthew, and then I'm like, okay, wow, this is getting okay, spooky God. here. Yeah. And I'm like, let's just test this out. <laughs> <laughs> and I landed on the same passage of scripture wow. describing John the Baptist as a voice. Yeah. And then I had identity. I knew that I would have a John the Baptist type ministry, and I just hoped I wouldn't get beheaded. Yeah, know? exactly. <laughs> so true. Yeah. Wow, that, that's a huge, that's a huge <laughs> anointing to have on you. Wow. Yeah. Okay. Wow. You wrote down a word from God that talks about a spirit of offense oh. running rampant through the church. Are these offended candidates for the great falling away? Are these? Absolutely. You know, the Bible said, so Jesus said, in the last days, the love of many will grow cold yeah. and many will be offended. And, you know, John the Baptist was having a hard time with not being released from prison. He's like, you know, where's Jesus in this? And I think as we progress into the end times, a lot of people are going to be offended that they're nice, pretty life is somehow altered by world events. I mean, this pandemic, for example, I know there's a lot of Christians that are mad at God because their, their, their husband died or their, their, their friend died. But the Lord is saying to you right now, it is not me who comes to steal, kill, and destroy. It is the mm. wicked one who comes to steal, kill, and destroy. Right. And the Lord is saying, I yeah. am going to cause joy to come out of your weeping. And, and we have to never, never allow ourselves to get offended at God. It's bad enough when we get offended with each other. Other. Exactly. Yeah. But when we get offended with God, because we don't understand, that is, I think, how the devil's taking people out. Wow. That is so good. Powerful. That is power. That's right. And it's powerful. In chapter five of your book, your brand new book here, The Making of a Watchman, that we're talking about today, you say that Habakkuk gives us immediate clues to develop a watchman's eye. Will you explain those clues for us, Jennifer? Mm -hmm. And how do we activate them? Yeah, we have to be, a lot of it goes back to prayer. You're always going to find me going back to prayer over and over and over. Mm -hmm. But here's another thing that I've learned is being spiritually aware. And it takes practice. I was traveling on a train through Europe, ministering in different countries in Europe in 2019. We went from London to France. When I stepped into France, the Lord said, France on fire. Mm. I did not, I, I hoped it was revival because I'm, like, I'm revival minded, you know, right. and I'm like, it's a revival. And the Lord's like, no, it's not revival. What is it? Well, just three days, four days later, the, the uh, Notre Dame just about burned to the ground. Mm. And the, uh, but because I released the word, I didn't know what it meant. I didn't have the fullness. And that's what we have to understand. Sometimes it's enough to release a part because another watchman has another part. Yeah. And I released that word, France on fire. And guess what happened? The intercessors in France started praying without ceasing and it didn't burn all the way to the ground. We didn't prevent it from, you know, catching fire. Yeah, but right. And then I stepped into, so being spiritually where I stepped into Berlin and I was on my phone, you know, sort of, you know, trying to find a, 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 a cab or a taxi or train. Tra and, and the Lord says, look up. And when I looked up, I saw this truck and it said Artemis. And Artemis is essentially Diana from the Bible, the false God. And that is essentially the spirit of Jezebel. And mm. the Lord was able to show me what was going on in the territory, wow. right? My. 
Yes. And so the Lord wants to show you what's going on with your kids. Yes. He wants to show you what's going on in your church, mm -hmm. in your businesses, so that mm -hmm. you're not blindsided by the wicked one. Yeah, that's wow. powerful. Yeah. It really is. Spiritually aware. Yeah. Being yeah. spiritually aware. Everybody, guys, everybody needs to get this some way, shape, or form. And Jennifer, this DVD that uh, Monisela keeps talking about, Heaven's War Room, this is Jennifer speaking here on Gray Street. And you'll receive the evening service with Jennifer LeClaire here on Gray Street, along with one book for $25 donation to the ministry. And if you're like me, I really like what I call the friends and family offer. And that is, is for $65, you receive three books, The Making of a Watchman and one DVD, Heaven's War Room. I really, really feel strong that the leaders, uh, whoever they are in your church or your, co your congregation or wherever it is that you attend, need to have this book. This yeah. will help them. Mm -hmm. It'll help them identify even more, even though they mm -hmm. may be. Maybe they've been a pastor for 50 years. Maybe they're just starting out in ministry. How about, how about young people that are in, in Bible school, yeah. you know, mm -hmm. and going to ministry school and school starting back now. I mean, yeah. everything's starting back again. And so this is the book for the hour mm -hmm. right now. If you want something that's a right now, right on time book, here it is. Jennifer's written it for you, The Making of a Watchman. So you can receive this. Now, did you make a baker's dozen? We absolutely do. We have the baker's dozen, which is 13 of the books. And that is for a donation of $200. And you'll also receive the Heaven's War Room DVD included in that offer. That includes shipping and handling as well. Remember, call us. You can call us at 1-888-988-1588 to give your love gift. And I just want to remind you, you know, we... You know, we're just in this time right now that we're believing for God as a ministry. I know dad, you know, he, he's resting. And I'm so thankful that dad's resting because I know just these last few months, you've washed all the things that we've been going through as a ministry. And I'm so proud of him and how he has not given up. And that's what I love. The watchman does not give up. Right. And we have seen that. You know, I know many of those who live here at Morning said, you have watched Pastor Jim not give up. And that's an inspiration to us. Yes, it to is. To see that when the anointing of God is on you, he tells me, he says, Marisola, no matter how much I want to in the natural, I know that I can never give up on that's the right. call that God's placed in my life. That's right. But what I want to thank you, though, because when you give your donation, you're standing with us. You're allowing us. Our desire is to offer the platform to the prophetic voices, that's to the right. voice of the prophets, to the watchmen, to sound the alarm. Because we believe with you, Jennifer. We believe that times are getting closer and closer. We see the times. We are watching. Yeah. The Lord says, be alert. Know the days that you're living in. These are the signs. He gives us those signs, and we teach them from the stage every day. Mm -hmm. So I want to thank you because when you order a book, you're not only blessing our guests and their ministry, you're also blessing our ministry, the voice of the prophets. And I just want feel led right now that if any of you, as we have been asking to stand with us during this time, we're asking you to partner with us. If you feel led to give that $1,000 donation to the ministry, this is our SOS time. We're just believing. God, we will believe God for a miracle. Yes. And I love what the prophets have been coming and they've been saying, if you've heard them, if you've been watching, the thing that the prophets have been saying is it's this Esther church that is going to raise up and God will use them. But I love what they say that even Esther, the warning to Esther was, if you don't do it, mm -hmm. God will have someone else that he will use. Mm -hmm. And I believe that's a prophetic word that I've taken for this ministry, that those of you you're watching and the Lord is raising up people who he will give a spiritual burden for the voice of the prophets to be heard. I know there's many of you who are watching. You partner with us. And that's that spiritual burden that you say, we see the times, Lord. Mm -hmm. And the voice of the prophets has to go into all the world. The gospel has to be preached. And so I want to thank you. I want to remind you, though, with that SOS offer, we are including the Miracles Happens blanket. That's from Miss Joan Hunter yes. when she was here. Yes. We love that. We're believing God from miracles. Miracles in this season right now. We're also including her brand new book, which was Just Don't Quit, along with her healing CD. And that's for that $1,000 donation. And we're going to send you dad's book as well. You can make it in that $1,000 SOS love gift to the ministry to stand with us. Yes, everybody, you know, we, we do. We thank you because um, 
if, if it wasn't for you standing with us and the SOS, which is save our stations, yes, that's yes. what that means. Not save our ship, but I guess yes, save our is. ship too. Yes. But, uh, but, but save our stations Amen. is what that means. And partnering with this ministry and the miracles happen blanket. You know, remember the story when we had, we have two, um, these amazing two women that come to our home and who have been helping uh, Jim with his recovery, their RNs, and, and, and they came and they brought the seed. That's in our bedroom. A that. miracles happen Amen. blanket. <laughs> and then, and they're just so vivacious and so amazing. Then Jenny goes over, she goes, I'm laying it over Jim and, he, and praying over him. And yes. then we have this amazing time of prayer over, over Jim and for his complete healing and for him to go forth. And I'm a huge believer in finishing strong, whatever it Amen. is in life whether it's a project or, or a, you know, whatever it is, but especially in life, d don't finish weak, but finish strong and fulfill your destiny that God has called you, the assignment that God has called you to do because God's called every single one of Amen. us for something. And, and there's so many believers out there that don't even know hmm. why, what, what's God called me to do? What am I supposed to be doing? And you're never too old and you're never too young. God has a purpose and a plan for your life. Amen. And we just want to also make sure that if you don't know Jesus, maybe you're flipping across the channels. And, you know, a lot of people, we flip across, I flip across the channels too and look and see what's going on. And, and if you don't know Jesus as your personal Lord and Savior, now is your day. Now is what I call your Easter Sunday. That's the day I fully surrendered my life to the Lord it was on Easter Sunday, 1989. And that was the most beautiful day of my life and the best choice I ever made. But I feel that there's also many people who have just, you know, you just get kind of lazy in your Christianity and your salvation. It's time to rededicate your life completely Amen. and fully unto the Lord. Today is your day. Just just ask him, just saying, Lord, and keep short accounts. Jim's always said this to me, keep short accounts with God. Yes. Really, just, you know, I'm constantly, every single day, we all sin and we all fall short of the glory of God. And you may not think that you sinned that day, but maybe ask God and say, is there anything today that wasn't like in accordance to what you would have me to do, Lord? And, and just make things right with him. Keep short accounts with him because he loves you. He does. Yes. And he has a plan and a purpose for your life, no matter what age, no matter what stage of life you are in. Jennifer, you have been amazing with yes. this today. Thank we you. love you so much. Thank you me. are a warrior. Yeah. You still are a warrior. That You are truly <laughs> a warrior, and we appreciate you. You have to think 50 books, this young woman has, <laughs> whoa, amazing. I mean, prolific books. It just flows out of her. And so we are going to uh, talk again with you. So. For now, just remember what Jim always says at the end of each broadcast, as he has for many years. God loves you. He really does. Bye-bye for now. Thank you, Jennifer. Thank you. Love you. Love you.